In this video, we will briefly talk about hierarchical clustering. So far, we have seen that deciding how many clusters are appropriate for a given problem is not that easy. We have seen several methods to do that, but none of them is really satisfactory. So how about we get a complete picture of similarities and distances between the points in our data and based on this complete picture we make a decision about how many clusters we want. Hierarchical clustering provides a way to do this. Here is the main idea. We start with each point in its own cluster and then we greedily merge most similar clusters. And we repeat this process until we obtain this one large cluster. So every point goes through this journey of being its own cluster and then belonging to bigger and bigger clusters. Hierarchical clustering can be visualized using a tool called dendrogram. Scikit-learn doesn't have capability to create dendrograms, so we will be using this scipy.cluster.hierarchy uh, for hierarchical clustering. Let's look at an example input and output for hierarchical clustering. I'm creating some toy data here. Our data has 11 examples. And this is our dendrogram. This is the output of hierarchical clustering. How do we interpret this dendrogram? Dendrogram is a tree-like plot. On the x-axis, we have indices for all our examples. On the y-axis, we have cluster distances. In hierarchical clustering, we start with each point in its own cluster. And then we greedily merge these clusters. When we merge clusters, we create this new parent node. For example, here we are merging these two clusters, cluster zero and cluster two, and we are creating this parent node here at distance a little bit greater than 0.5. Similarly, here we are merging this cluster 4 and cluster 7, and we are creating this new parent node. Likewise, here we are merging these two clusters, cluster 0, 2 and cluster 4, 7, these two, and we are creating a new parent node here. So this is how we form a tree in this dendrogram. Now we see these branches in this tree. And the length of these branches shows how far the merged clusters go. For example, this particular branch goes till here and then it gets merged with this other cluster. And these branches, these other branches are kind of long. So what's the meaning of that? Very long branches means that those clusters, they last for a long time. So what does this mean? If we cut our tree uh, on this branch, for instance, if we cut this branch, then for a while we will get three clusters, right? So if we cut this tree at this threshold four, then we will have these three clusters, this pink cluster, red cluster, and green cluster. If we cut it at this threshold of two, then we will have four clusters. This small one, this uh, three, five, nine, then this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so at this point, we will have these four clusters. On the other hand, if we cut it here, at this threshold of seven, we will only have two clusters. So this green cluster and this big cluster. Okay, so this branch is long 
And what it means is that going from three clusters to two clusters means that we will be merging very far apart points because this branch is long. Okay, so basically that's how we interpret this dendrogram. So I just said this, I said that. Now, an important point. So far we were talking about distances between points. But in hierarchical clustering, all of a sudden we are talking about distances between clusters. How do we measure distances between clusters? There are a number of linkage criteria which determine how to find similarity between different clusters. And some of the example linkage criteria include single linkage, average linkage, complete linkage, and word linkage. Let's see examples of these linkages. So this is the dendrogram that we saw before. And what do we want to do is we want to find distances between clusters. So suppose this is one cluster and this is another cluster. So we want to find distance between this one and this one. How can we do that? There could be several ways. A simple way would be calculating distances of all points in this cluster with all other points in another cluster and then take average of that. And that is your average linkage. Okay, so that's how we calculate distances between clusters. If we take mean distance, then that will be our single linkage. If we take maximum distance between these clusters, when we calculate all these distances, that will be our complete linkage. Yeah, so basically to calculate distances between clusters, we use these linkage criteria. Now, if you want to create a dendrogram uh, on your data set, first thing you need to do is you need to create this linkage matrix. As I mentioned before, scikit-learn doesn't really have this. So we will be using this scipy.cluster.hierarchy and you need to import these linkage criteria from uh, this package. So single, average, complete, and var. These, these are the ones I'm importing here. And now when I call single linkage, when I create this single linkage matrix on our data on X, what do we get? So this is what we get. The linkage function returns this matrix Z of shape N minus one by four. Okay, so it has four columns. And each row here, it represents iterations in our hierarchical clustering. And what are these columns? So in each iteration, the first two columns, for instance, so these are the indices of clusters being merged in that iteration. Okay, so in our zeroth iteration, it's saying that cluster zero and cluster two are going to get merged. Then this third column shows the distance between these two clusters. And the fourth column shows how many examples are there in this newly formed cluster. Now let's create dendrogram with single linkage. So we already have created our linkage matrix Z and I'm passing it to this dendrogram function and it gives us this dendrogram. Similarly, we can create dendrograms for average linkage and complete linkage and word linkage. That's the basic idea of hierarchical clustering. Let's apply hierarchical clustering on UN subvotes dataset. This is our dataset, 
And what we have in this data set is we have 17 different countries and we have votes of these 17 countries on different UN resolutions. So we have 17 countries, 17 rows and 368 votes. So 368 columns. Now let's cluster countries based on how they vote. As I mentioned before, if we want to apply hierarchical clustering, first thing that we need to do is create linkage matrix. So here I have written a function to plot dendrogram. We can use any method that we want, average or single or complete or word and so on. Now the metric here I'm using is Hamming distance because we are only interested in knowing whether the countries agreed or disagreed on resolutions. So that's the distance matrix that I decided to use. And I'm creating linkage matrix and uh, plotting dendrogram. Let's look at this dendrogram. So this is the dendrogram that we get. What do we see here? So we have all our 17 countries here and all European countries, we see that they are clustered together here. And then Malaysia and Sri Lanka, they are kind of close together. And US is kind of on its own, right? So if we decide to cut this uh, tree at say 0.5, then we will get two clusters, US versus all other countries. When your data set is really large, when you have large number of examples, you can imagine that this dendrogram becomes hard to visualize. So to handle that, there are uh, some truncate modes that you can use. And here I'm showing you a couple of examples of using this truncation. Finally, if you want to look at cluster assignments at a particular level, you can use this F cluster method. So here I'm showing you cluster assignments for our 17 different countries at a particular level in our dendrogram. That's all about hierarchical clustering.